Okay, so today in our limited company essentials course, we're going to go into VAT registration. So this is going to be a breakdown of what you need to know about VAT and some possible things you may need to consider if you are starting your own company. So the first part, what is VAT? Well, that is a good question. Is literally value added tax. So this is added to goods or services that are taxable. So by taxable, I mean things that are obviously not exempt from VAT or are reduced rate, which is normally 5%, or zero rated goods, which is 0%. So things like train travel, for example, is zero rated and some toiletries and things like that will be 5%. And there are many kinds of exempt VAT items. So if you're worried about that, such as medical services, then you will need to look into that for sure or get help with if your services are exempt or not. Currently, VAT is a sales tax with a standard rate of 20%. So this is what you'll mostly see when you buy a product uh, in a normal shop, or let's say you're getting a computer or something like that, hardware, software, whatever it is, gonna be 20% VAT. And in some cases, it's not because the client is located in Europe, let's say. And if you've also got a VAT number, that means they can basically charge you 0% VAT because it's meant to be done on a reverse charge, which is something else that I will get into in another video. But basically all you need to know if there's two businesses, this is business A, <laughs> let's say they're in the EU. Obviously these rules can change if the UK leaves the EU or whatever, but, and we've got business B uh, is a UK business. And if both of them, have a VAT registration number, let's say business A is registered in Europe and business B has a UK VAT number, then they can charge each other 0% VAT on goods and services because it's made to be done on a reverse charge. And that's pretty much how it works. So people who will mostly pay VAT are actually individuals such as consumers. <laughs> so business to business, obviously if they're both VAT registered, won't need to be worrying about other businesses charging them VAT for the most part if they're on the standard rate scheme. Uh, so it's mostly individuals that are going to be paying VAT on goods or services and also non-VAT registered companies, of course. Let's go through some cons of VAT registration. So first, uh, the biggest con, <laughs> obviously, if you're charging customers that are not VAT registered an extra 20% VAT, your prices are going to be more expensive. It's as simple as that. The alternative is to absorb the VAT portion into your service fees. So they relatively stay the same price for the customer, but then you will be earning less money at about 16.7%. So. It's not ideal when you're invoicing customers that are not VAT registered, but obviously if you are earning over a certain amount of money, then you have to VAT register. There's no way to get around that. Uh, so, so at least in the beginning, there's no point in registering for VAT if you're mostly dealing with clients that are not VAT registered um, because you're not gonna be benefiting from that very much. Your price is just gonna go up or you're gonna lose money. Obviously, if you have a lot of materials to reclaim VAT on, then it may still be worth considering it just because your costs will go up as a result. Other than that, there will be some admin time and record keeping on the standard rate scheme for VAT. So you're gonna need to keep all of your VAT receipts. You're gonna make sure that if you've got software, then that software has the right VAT amount in there. For the most part, when you're buying materials, it's all just gonna be 20% VAT, so it's pretty easy to work out. Um, but in some cases, if you go to a store to buy some subsistence, like a drink or something, along with some materials for your services, and some of the VAT rates are like 0% mixed in there, or 5% or whatever, so it's like a weird number of VAT, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure your software is updated with the exact amount of VAT for your VAT return. And we're saving pros for the next one. So pros of VAT registration, you can reclaim VAT on expenses on the standard rate scheme. So this is like the usual scheme most people will apply for. And I'll get into exactly what this implies in a later portion of the video. Another pro is business to business transactions won't suffer from extra VAT. So if you are starting up a company that is predominantly providing services to business clients or even clients that are out of the scope of that, so for example, if you've got US clients with a UK company, 
then basically there's no extra thing to worry about because of VAT. So in the UK, they can reclaim VAT, so that's all good. In the US, you won't need to charge them VAT, so that's all good too. Um, but of course, if you've got a significant amount of sales within the US, they may want you to register for sales tax there, possibly and submit returns. Um, but that is outside the scope of UK VAT systems, so that's all going to be done with the US. Other countries include Australia and things like that. They'll want you to register for VAT in their own country. On the flat rate scheme, there is minimal bookkeeping required because it just uses a percentage to work out the VAT liability. And I'll explain this scheme in more detail. I usually recommend this scheme for people that are starting up companies that won't have many expenses. For example, an IT consultancy company won't have very many expenses to begin with. You might have a one-off cost like a laptop and then you've got some software subscriptions or whatever you need for services, but you're not gonna have like loads and loads of material purchases to basically rebuild to clients and things like that. So you'll usually have a better time on the flat rate scheme, you'll get more money from it and you'll have less requirements with things like bookkeeping and VAT receipts. There's also no need to track your turnover to see if you need to register later in the future. So the VAT registration threshold is 85k and obviously if you don't VAT register when you start your business then you'll need to track your turnover and make sure that you don't cross this before registering for VAT. Uh, if you've got a decent software though, this should be easy to track anyway, or if you've got an accountant such as our service, then we'll obviously track that for you. So it is workable, but that is a pro in case you're doing it yourself. And finally, it can be more appealing to customers because it could look like you are a bigger company. Like I said, you have to register for VAT once you hit 85k turnover. So, you know, if you're VAT registered and a smaller business, clients may think you're bigger than you actually are. You may have a chance to get more business and things like that. So when do you actually need to register for VAT? Uh, firstly, if your turnover reaches 85k, you will definitely need to register. <laughs> you can also voluntarily register, which is what I was talking about for things like consultancy businesses in IT or project management, whatever it may be. You'll benefit from the flat rate scheme pretty well and you don't have to do that much to get on there. There is a restriction on the flat rate scheme though of who can register, which I will mention in a bit. So you may not be able to register if you're providing only exempt services. So this is something you'll need to check up on whether your services are exempt from VAT and you should get professional advice if you're not sure uh, for exempt and reduced rate of supplies. So, you know, get yourself some help with that because it can be a lot to navigate. VAT is not a simple topic to get through. I'm trying to break it down as much as I can here so you can at least get the gist of it. So what is standard rate VAT? By what the name implies is literally the standard way to calculate VAT and it's 20%. <laughs> so it's the most common VAT registration available to all companies. There's no kind of limitation on running the standard rate scheme. It is the main one to be on. So you can charge 20% VAT on top of your services. Well, I say can, you will need to charge 20% VAT. This is called the output VAT. And if you've got software, you don't normally need to worry about these terms, or if you've got an accountant, like we will deal with all that stuff. Um, reclaim any VAT paid on your business expenses. And this is called the input VAT. And then you deduct the input VAT from the output VAT. And the difference is basically the liability payable to HMRC. I have rhymes apparently. Um, so you must have valid VAT receipts for all reclaimed expenses. If you do not, basically you can't claim those costs because there's no evidence that VAT was ever billed to you. And of course it works best for companies with many expenses because you can reclaim VAT on all of them. And also that kind of mitigates the downside of having to charge the VAT to clients, specifically if they're not also VAT registered. Let's look at an example for standard rate VAT. Okay. So let's say you had invoices during a VAT quarter. So normally you do VAT returns quarterly or every three months. Let's say you had three invoices of 1000 plus VAT each. So that's 200 pounds per invoice in just VAT. This is just the VAT portion. So that means the total VAT you charged 
is 600 pounds for the quarter. This would technically be due to HMRC as a payment for this quarter. But you had variable expenses of 120 pounds, including VAT during the quarter. So on this basically means there is 20% VAT included in this cost. So this is like 120% here, this price here, which means that the total that you paid is 20 pounds. And this is basically subtracted from this 600 here. And that works out your total liability of 580 pounds. And this is a very standard, <laughs> standard, standard rate calculation where you have your output VAT and here, and you've got your input VAT here. And then the difference is just what you pay to HMRC. So you were able to reclaim that 20 pounds. Your company has paid less money now and you just paid over the rest that you collected from your customers to HMRC. So what is the flat rate scheme? I have mentioned this earlier and I'll go into some more detail here. So it's basically available to businesses with turnover of up to 150K. And once you go over this, you get kicked off the scheme basically. So it's good for people just starting out, want to keep their admin to a minimal because they don't have much time to spend on that <laughs> or they just don't want to spend the time on that and they don't have many expenses and this is perfect for you. So minimal admin required, because the VAT level is calculated from your invoices. And most commonly, you'll be a limited cost trader. This is because you need to basically have more than 2% of your turnover for the year in VAT material costs. And it can't be things like office equipment. It can't be things like computer software. It has to be goods or materials actually used up in providing the service. Uh, so the most easy example or stationary things like that um, <laughs> the most simple example i can give you is a plumber so let's say they had been called out to fix a leaky tap or something and in order to fix the leaky tap they had to buy some materials which were left at the house that they were at in order to repair the leaky tap so they've basically paid for something and have left it at the site and it's just going to be there forever it's been used up in the service that is an example of a material cost and if you don't have more than two percent of your turnover and also at least one thousand pounds for the year in those material costs then you cannot claim your normal percentage on the flat rate scheme so there's a percentage for each trade sector but if you don't meet the one thousand minimum and two percent turnover minimum then you're going to be on fifteen and a half percent on the flat rate scheme, you cannot reclaim VAT on normal expenses. This is because your company is supposed to make extra income from the flat rate to go towards these costs. And basically you don't have to worry about keeping track of the VAT on your expenses, which is why the scheme is really good for people that want to keep their time to a minimum. So there is only one case where you can reclaim VAT and it's on a capital purchase of 2000 pounds or more. So for example, if you were going to buy a laptop, let's say it was 1600 pounds, you might as well get it up to 2000 pounds with accessories because you'll be able to reclaim the VAT off that 2000 and 2000 without VAT is basically 1667. So you get an extra 400 pounds more worth of stuff <laughs> for a very minimal cost to your company. So this is really good when you get things like computer equipment, uh, expensive machinery and so on. But you must remember to include it all on one receipt or the purchase will not qualify. So that's kind of the gist of the flat rate scheme. And I will give you an example of this. So this is flat rate. Okay, so it's the same invoice as before. We've got 1000 pounds plus VAT times three and this makes a total invoice value of 3,600 pounds. It's the same VAT amount as before as well. But this time, instead of taking this figure here, we've got the flat rate charge, which takes the total invoice price, including VAT you'll notice, <laughs> and you multiply it by 15.5%. And this gives you the final VAT payable figure of 558 to HMRC. And basically what this means is that your company charged 600 pounds in VAT. So this is like extra money to your business 
because of being VAT registered. You're normally supposed to charge the VAT on top of your service, so this would be extra money. And your company paid HMRC 558 for the VAT liability. So there has been a gain between these two figures, meaning your company got to keep £42 from those invoices to pay for actual VAT on expenses. Now, in the last example, I only had £120 worth of expenses, including VAT. So we only got £20 back from the initial £600. In this example, we've got a total of £42 as extra income, which more than double covers the cost of the actual VAT. So you can see how this would work well with businesses that don't have many expenses, because you can essentially get more than enough money to cover minimal VAT costs and you get to keep the rest as income. And you don't have much admin, so they're all pluses. <laughs> uh, but of course, there is one downside. So limited cost traders, the 15.5% is only in the first year because you get a 1% like bonus introductory reduction in percent. And you'd only be a limited cost trader if you didn't have enough to reach that 2% minimum turnover in material costs. So after the first year, it'll go up to the normal percentage of 16 and a half. And this just about is slightly better than breaking even. So at this point, you might want to consider whether it's worth switching to standard rate for your business. But that'll be something to consider later down the line. And of course, you can have a look at that if you've got an accountant or something, or if you're with our service, then we'll have a look at that for you, of how much of that you're potentially spending, and also whether it's worth switching. So that is pretty much my rather condensed guide on VAT registration for your new company. And I try to keep it as simple as possible so you can have as much information, but without completely blowing you away with too much information. <laughs> and hopefully this helps you guys decide whether to register for VAT or not and kind of understand some of the implications involved with VAT registration. Of course, if your turnover is too high, you will just need to register. There's no, you don't have a choice. <laughs> so. If that's the case, it's not a problem. The making tax digital stuff can be solved quite easily with compatible software. And we normally use free agent for our clients, which works quite well. It's very straightforward and they've got a guide and everything set up. I mean, other software providers, obviously like the big ones like Xero will also help with all of that stuff. So, but I highly recommend just checking out free trial and seeing their features and see which one you get on with the most. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it really helpful. Also, if you've got questions, then do leave them in the comments and we will try to get back to you as soon as we can. <laughs>